We begin in Sacramento, California during the early 1900s, where the painter returns home from a child custody court hearing. After briefly wandering around his empty mansion to find a key, with uneven steps due to his incorrectly sized prosthetic leg, he proceeds to unlock and enter his workshop to begin painting his final masterpiece, the magnum opus. He removes the cover from the painting's blank canvas, which triggers schizophrenic hallucinations involving past events in his life, causing him to relive them. The painter was originally ambitious, talented, and popular, using his beautiful and successful pianist wife as both the inspiration and model for his art. His wife became pregnant, and he bought a dog, a Doberman named Popiel, for his family, before his wife gave birth to their daughter. A few years later, while the wife was performing at the grand opening of a new local department store, called the Galactic, the building's electrical wiring burst into flames, trapping her and several other people inside, where they sustained severe burn injuries. After completing her treatment at the hospital, the wife returned to their home, though she retained permanent facial disfiguration, chronic pain, and nerve damage, which required her to use a wheelchair, prevented her from playing the piano as well as she did before, and caused even basic tasks, such as writing, to be very difficult for her. As such, the painter became the sole source of income for their family, leading him to spend more time working on his paintings while leaving his wife to care for their daughter. The stress of this then led the painter to develop a drinking problem, made worse by the distracting noise of his wife and daughter's presence, coupled with Popiel's constant barking outside his workshop. He put a muscle on Popiel to stop his barking, but was soon plagued by hallucinations of rats throughout the house, the beginning of his latent schizophrenia, triggered by the extreme stress and alcohol abuse. The painter created several illustrations of these rats, depicting them in various forms, along with a portrait of a mysterious entity known as the Rat Queen, even going so far as to contact an encyclopedia publisher to insist that they update their entry on rats to be more insidious. As his condition worsened, the painter's talents began to decay, and his artistic vision became more twisted, driving away friends, business associates, and clients due to his foul temperament and horrific illustrations of simple commissions, such as a portrait and the children's book Little Red Riding Hood. The painter would also unknowingly write extremely harsh notes in his wife's handwriting, with scathing criticisms and personal attacks, attach them to his own new works, and then later discover them, resulting in his own angry outbursts and wrongful confrontations with his wife. After a long period of neglect due to her self-perceived lack of beauty, the wife fell into a state of depression, where she would converse with the Lady in Black, a tribute portrait the painter made of her before the fire, believing that the painter was only interested in the past version of herself captured within it. This ultimately led to her writing an apologetic note for their daughter to read at some point in the future, burning the Lady in Black along with the painter's other past paintings, resulting in the cancellation of their sales to a buyer, and her committing suicide by slitting her wrists in the bathtub with a kitchen knife. After discovering her body in the bathroom, the painter went insane, killing Popiel and taking six body parts from his wife's corpse in order to create his magnum opus, believing that completing it would bring her back to life as she originally was, restoring both his talent and his family. He removed her skin for the canvas, her blood for the paint, her bone for the undercoat, her hair for the brush, her finger for smearing, and her eye to spectate as an audience for the work. The painter then proceeded to shut himself in the house, creating and recreating the painting many times, for many years, depicting his wife in different stages of their relationship. He attempted to raise his daughter on his own with a little time he could spare while painting, but eventually lost custody to the state, and she was subsequently adopted as the public became more aware of the painter's further deteriorating obsessive mental state. Each time the painter completed the painting, upon stepping back to admire his work and his wife's beauty, his mind would warp the image into a mutilated figure that laughed at him, causing him to throw it into an upstairs room where the many versions of this painting accumulated over time, also torturing him with laughter. The painter, having reflected on these events for the last time, makes his final attempt at the magnum opus, and can decide to either make it a self-portrait, considering the misery and suffering his family went through as a sacrifice for him to obtain perfect immortality in an art museum, or to make it a family portrait of both his wife and daughter, forcing him to face the reality that they're both gone, realize the terrible mistakes he's made, and that he can never bring them back, no matter how many times he tries. He decides that his magnum opus is the family portrait, and upon completing it, carries it to the upstairs room, where he sets fire to it, along with all the previous paintings, before laying down in the fire himself and burning to death. Several years later, the daughter returns to the ruins of the destroyed mansion as an adult to relive her own past memories in order to confront and come to terms with her difficult childhood. While reminiscing, the daughter can choose to focus more favorably on either of her parents, the painter or the wife, and decides to fondly remember the painter. The daughter recalls the painter teaching her to create art, encouraging her to put away her crayons and drawings in favor of a variety of different colored paints, each evolving her painting to depict a more detailed story. She also recalls Papiel being scolded by the painter and the wife yelling at her while in tremendous pain. She finds the painter's written last will and testament, denouncing all his former acquaintances, except her, whom he leaves all his possessions to, telling her that she has a gift, and that he has always believed in her. 
She remembers the wife teaching her to play piano and the painter working on his magnum opus, as well as a few of her early birthdays. On her third birthday, which was before the fire, both the painter and the wife happily celebrated together with her. But on her fifth birthday, which was after the fire, the wife didn't want her daughter to see her in her current state, so the painter celebrated with her alone. And on her eighth birthday, after the wife had committed suicide, the painter broke down in tears at the celebration. She recalls playing with her toys while overhearing an argument between her parents, where the wife accuses the painter of finding her physically disgusting, but he claims that it's her mentality and how she let the fire incident change her that disgusts him, because it's not who he knows her to truly be. The daughter then remembers when the painter lost custody of her and she was taken away, concluding that he did love both of them, but had trouble expressing it. The final memory that the daughter revisits is of being forced to sit still in the painter's workshop while he painted her portrait. Though he was strict during the process, upon observing the completed painting at the end of it, he realized from her expression that he had scared her and apologized to her. She realizes from this that he was only able to truly understand and process the world from images he observed on a canvas. Upon final reflection of these memories, the daughter can choose to arrange all her collected crayon drawings into a portrait of her the painter secretly drew on top of them, believing she would find it one day, along with a hidden sketch of a rat with an underlying map of the house, directing her to a secret workshop behind the cabinets in his, where she recognizes her inheritance as being able to see the world with the same madness as the painter, as her mind transforms the hidden room from dark and decrepit to bright and cheerful, with the same canvas he saw each time he started creating his magnum opus. Alternatively, the daughter can find another framed portrait of herself as a child, created after she was taken away, left behind as both her inheritance and an offering of apology from the painter. After doing so, she can either reflect on her bad memories of the painter yelling at her, decide the portrait is an insufficient apology, and smash it against the dresser, inadvertently knocking over a lit candelabra in the process, causing the ceiling to collapse, trapping and killing her, or she can accept the portrait as sufficient apology, empathize with the painter's tragic circumstances, forgive him, and burn the house down to erase all traces of its past while leaving with the portrait, which she does. She then hangs the portrait in her home while admiring her own child's drawings, but proceeds to criticize the child's choice of color, mirroring the same statement the painter made to her years ago, while the portrait distorts in her mind, indicating that the daughter is beginning to experience the same mental imbalance and obsession with perfection as the painter, with the madness being her true inheritance after all. <laughs>